Hello GCSE PE students, I hope you're all safe and well. Uh, this week's lesson is a continuation of a lesson we looked at a couple of weeks ago when we looked at the five key social groups with regards to participation in physical activity. This week we'll be looking at some other factors. So there are six other factors in addition uh, to those five key social groups that we'll be looking at this week. Now I'll come back to this slide shortly. Uh, but we'll start with a little starter activity. So if you haven't got a pen and paper, if you just want to pause the video uh, and go and get one now. Okay, so on your pen and paper, we've got nine questions. Uh, depending on the difficulty, they're worth various number of points. You've got eight minutes to answer as many as you can within that time to try and accumulate as many points as possible if you want to pause the video now. Okay, brilliant. So what I'll do, I'll put the answers up if you just want to mark yours. And if you've got any wrong, obviously just write the correct answer in. And then I'll just go through um, a couple of common misconceptions with you. So if you want to pause the video now, and mark your answers. Okay, brilliant. Right, just a couple of common misconceptions then. So if we look at question number four, or rather the answer here, just make sure you don't get the job of tendons and ligaments mixed up. So tendons attach muscle to bone, and they're to do with movement. Ligaments attach bone to bone, and they are to do with supporting the joint. Um, question five, so... The job or jobs of cartilage, uh, different types of cartilage have different jobs, but generally cartilage is there to protect the end of a bone and also act as a shock absorber. And then question seven over here, uh, the definition of a synovial joint. Just make sure that you remember this. A synovial joint is a freely movable joint where two or more bones meet or where two or more bones articulate, which is basically another word for move. So add up your uh, answers, add up your points, see how many points you've got. Okay, so this week's lesson, then we're going to look at factors that affect participation in physical activity. So we're going to hopefully be able to identify the six other factors, which is sort of grade two to three uh, level of knowledge. Uh, we're going to describe how they affect participation using practical examples and then to get the higher grades, the sort of AO3 uh, style level of knowledge, we're going to evaluate the participation levels of specific individuals or look at scenarios based on social groups and other factors. Just a few key words that we'll be using this lesson. Okay, so very quickly then, just a little bit of a recap from two weeks ago. Can you remember what or who the five key social groups were from last lesson? So what I'd like you to do, just pause the video. Shouldn't take you too long on your pen and paper. Just see if you can remember those five from memory and write them down. Okay, if you need a little help, I'll put these images up to act as a prompt. So again, if that helps, just pause the video, write any down that you didn't get first time, or it might be that you're checking what you've got written down. Okay, so a couple of lessons ago then, a couple of weeks ago, we've got family, we've got age, we've got gender, we've got ethnicity, and we've got disability. So if you remember a couple of weeks ago, uh, we looked at how these will affect participation and the factors. So, for example, we spoke about how uh, having family members who are physically active themselves uh, will be a positive influence on your participation because family members who are physically active themselves are more likely to help with transport and uh, cost of equipment, and also they'll act as positive role models. Okay, so six other factors. There are six images on the screen just to act as little prompts. So what I want you to do on your pen and paper, uh, using your pen and paper, is try and identify the six other factors. So 
what could these images represent? So we've got what looks like a school setting here. We've got somebody looking quite stressed, possibly at work. We've got some money. Uh, we've got the Sky, Spo uh, Sky Sports microphone. We've got four footballers. Now, they're all there for a specific reason. Can you work out why these four are on that particular image? We've got Luis Suarez, Ashley Cole, Wayne Rooney and John Terry. And then we've got somebody skiing in the mountains. So if you just want to pause the video and write those down now. OK, so what we've got then, and you can check to see if you've got any of these correct. If not, it doesn't matter. Just write them down. So we've got education. We've got time or work commitments. We've got cost or the disposable income that somebody uh, has. We've got media. Okay, we've got role models. Now, those four arguably are not good examples of uh, role models, but that's why I got that image there to represent role models. And then we have got environment and climate okay you will now need uh, this worksheet with you and what i want you to do on your worksheet from memory is to try and identify and write the name of the factor that we've just looked at and then i only want you to write in this column here so if you have a look there's a gray line sort of splitting this bit into two okay so just on the left hand side i want you in your own words to describe how you think that particular factor might affect participation. So this one here, I'll give you this one is education. I want you to just a couple of sentences, describe how you think that would affect somebody's participation levels. So give yourself sort of six to eight minutes if you want to pause the video and complete that task now. Okay, fantastic. Right, looking at these in a little bit more detail then. So education how this affects participation. So schools can provide opportunities depending on the facilities, staff available and extracurricular clubs on offer. However, examination years, so when you're sort of in year 11, often sees a decrease in participation due to study commitments. Time and work commitments. So working full time and having family commitments will limit the time available to participate, train and compete in sport. And this sort of links really to age that we looked at a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, the older that you get and, and a, you know, your sort of working age, that's uh, a negative um, factor that affects participation. So that can be a barrier to participation. And it's linked very much to this, having more time and work commitments. Okay, cost and disposable income. So gym membership, facility hire, and equipment cost can all limit participation of certain socioeconomic groups who have less disposable income. So people who are perhaps unemployed or are on minimum wage or only work uh, part-time, if they've got less disposable income, that's going to be a barrier to participation in certain sports that might cost a little bit more money. Now, people in higher socioeconomic groups who have more disposable income, that isn't a barrier for them. So regardless of the cost of the gym, if they've got enough disposable income to pay for that, then that isn't a barrier for that particular socioeconomic group. Okay, media. So coverage is generally uh, male dominated and restricted to a few mainstream sports. Mainly football. So if you think about the sport on TV, um, it's, it's, you know, the vast majority is football, but other main street sports such as rugby, tennis and athletics, it tends to be restricted to those sort of four or five sports with your less mainstream sports, uh, female uh, dominated sports, there's less media attention. Okay, role models. So, I spoke about how these four, for various uh, reasons, could be described as bad role models for some of the uh, indiscretions that they might have done in the past. But it links to this sort of wider theme of role models. So a lack of role models in minority sports and social groups such as age, gender, ethnicity and disability 
can all limit participation. Now, what's interesting about these four is that they're all footballers. So clearly going back to uh, media and how it sort of links to that, football, you know, is a very sort of common sport. There's lots and lots of role models in football. And this is why we talk about in the minority sports, there's less so. So that is a factor that affects the participation levels of these particular sports. Okay, environment and climate. So choice and access and the opportunities that are on offer will very much depend on the environment and climate that you live in. So for example, rock climbing, mountaineering, kayaking, sailing and skiing are all activities and sports that are only available in certain parts of the country or in many cases, certain countries. And therefore that limits participation in them particular activities. So if you live in the middle of the country, for example, um, and there's no sort of, you know, lakes or, or, or water around you, then that's going to limit your uh, opportunities in terms of participating in kayaking or sailing. And again, if you live somewhere where there's not any mountains, then clearly skiing is not really going to be a, a an option for you. So environment and climate is also a factor that affects participation. Okay, what I want you to do then, back to this sheet then. So you should have filled this in and you should have filled that in. What I now want you to do, based on what we've just gone through, the last uh, six slides, where I described these in a little bit more detail, I want you to now complete this column where you're going to try and improve your first answer. So it doesn't matter what you've got in here, and you might have got it completely uh, wrong, but you can now complete this column here based on the last six slides uh, to improve this first answer. You can pause the video to complete that. You can rewind it to go back and check. Not a problem. If you give yourselves around about 10 minutes to complete that task. Okay, brilliant. So you should have uh, completed that worksheet now. So moving on. Let's just have a little bit of a recap now. So two lessons ago, we looked at the five key social groups. This lesson, we're looking at the six additional factors, which gives us 11 factors overall that affects participation. As a little test to see if you can remember them from memory on your uh, paper using a pen, see if you can write those 11 factors down from memory. If you just want to pause the video now, Okay, what I'll do then, if we're struggling a little bit, I'll just start putting the images up that we've used to represent those 11 factors. So any that you missed, hopefully this will jog your memory. So if you just want to look at those now, you can pause the video just to fill in any that you haven't got or change some of your answers based on these pictures. Okay, so family, age, gender, ethnicity, religion, and culture, disability, education, time and work commitments, cost and disposable income, media, role models, and environment and climate. Now these 11 factors, some of these are closely linked. So for example, age, as you get older, generally participation levels decrease. And one of the reasons, not all of them, but one of the reasons for that is the extra time and work commitments. Or if you live with a disability, the cost of specialised equipment might be quite high, which might also be a factor that affects participation. So you can see that these 11 factors, some of them, many of them are quite closely linked. OK. Right, next task then. So you'll need this worksheet in front of you. So let me just explain what this is. It's got four columns and it's got seven scenarios. This is looking at the AO3 evaluate the participation levels of specific individuals um, in terms of the learning outcomes, which is a grade six plus. So this worksheet here, this task is designed um, to help you in order to do that, in order to evaluate the participation levels. So what you've got here, you've got the scenario, then these three columns here, you've got barrier one with description, barrier two with description, 
and then a positive factor with description. Now, the description bit is really important. What I don't want you to do is just simply write the barrier. I want you to write the barrier and identify that, but then a description of how that barrier potentially will affect participation levels. So, for example, if I just give you a couple of examples for this first one, Darren is a 19 year old disabled man who is unemployed. So barrier one could be uh, Darren is disabled. And so therefore a lack of role models and less media attention will limit participation levels. In addition to this, there could be potentially a lack of access, the cost of equipment, and Darren may have suffered from discrimination in the past, which has affected his confidence in terms of participating in physical activity. So I've identified the barrier and I've given it a description. A positive factor could be uh, Darren's age, for example. So a positive factor because Darren is 19 years old, potentially he has less family and work commitments and therefore has more time and more opportunities to participate in physical activity. Okay, so you get the idea. So two barriers, so they're potentially negative factors, and then a potential positive factor that will increase participation levels. So if you want to complete that worksheet now, give yourself plenty of time for this. You can pause the video to complete that, but you can rewind the video, you can look over your notes, um, you can check some of your resources from previous lessons. If you want to give yourself 15 to 20 minutes to complete that task. So if you want to pause the video now. Okay, brilliant. So what I want you to do then, if you've completed your work electronically, you can just attach uh, those fi files to an email and email me your work. If you've printed them off and you've handwritten them in, just take a, a, a quick sort of picture on your phone and email me those, or if you've been unable to do that and you've completed all of this online paper, that's absolutely fine as well. Again, if you just want to take a quick picture and email that over to me on this email address. Okay, thank you for listening. I hope you found that useful. And more importantly, I hope uh, your knowledge of factors that affect participation has now increased. I look forward to seeing some of your work and hopefully see you soon.